Hello and welcome back on my YouTube channel, Pardoshi, Learning by Doing. So are you wondering why I'm sharing a screen showing a video that I had uploaded three years back, probably on July 7, 2020 and starting my video with. So the reason is three years back when I was working on UI platforms, it was one of the most amazing update by UiPath. Even there was an hackathon in collaboration with TechGeek that UiPath did and there one of the main product to be used in your hackathon submission was UiPath forms. Now, in 2023, UiPath has came up with a very interesting update to UiPath forms and it has changed the way completely we work with forms. Now, UiPath has brought integrations and feature updates in UiPath forms wherein you can add triggers, you can run local triggers, you can call different workflow from the same form itself. And there are many things that you can do, right? So in this video, we are going to see all the latest features, the latest UiPath forms have. This could be a little bit more detailed video because I'm going to talk about how to create the latest UiPath form, what things have changed, what are the trigger options that we have, and then there are going to be multiple things with respect to that. But by the end of this video, you will have a very clear idea on what the latest UiPath forms are, what are its advantages. And if you have worked on this previous forms, or if you just want to go through this introduction video, you can go through that so that you understand what is the difference between both the versions that are there of UiPath forms. So let's get started with the latest form. Now, to work with forms, you need to install the form package. So go to manage packages, all packages, search for uipath.form.activities. Once you search that, you will find the latest one, install the 23.4.6 version, and that's it. Now, assuming that you have the latest studio community version as well, what you have to do is, this is my main workflow. Let's ignore that for now. Now, when you click on new button, initially in probably 2020 or 2021, we used to have only four things over there. Sequence, flowchart, state machine, and global handler. Now, two more are added. That is workflow and form. So in the older version for form, you had to use an activity called as create form, and then you create the form and design it and perform all the operations. Now you have to create a form like a workflow. So if you see here's a form option, when I click on that, I have to give a form a particular name and it will be created like a workflow. Other than that, the way that you create the form still remains the same. The things that have changed, the first thing that has changed it, now instead of using a create form activity, you have to directly create a workflow. Now, before we go ahead and create a workflow, there are this set of activities which are coming in the updated package now. Bring form to foreground, change from properties, close from, from event trigger, get form values, run from script, set form values, show form, and multiple. So we are going to look into that. Now what I have done is I have created three different types of form. One is registration, second is new user registration, and third is existing user. So now once you create the file, create the form file, it will look something like this. So here you have to design whatever form you want to design. So what I have done is I have dragged and dropped a drop down. I will go to settings now, and you can see select operation is what I'm giving my drop down the value. And the field key, every time you create a form, one important thing that you have to keep in mind is the field key. Every form control that you create or form field that you create, you have to save their property name with a valid meaningful name and you will have to probably copy paste it somewhere. So let's copy paste it. And even if you don't, it is fine because in the latest version, things are going to be simple. What data is in my form? There are two options, a new user and existing user. All right. So now before we go ahead to what we are creating, I'm going to debug this particular code and show you that what I have exactly created. So by the end of the video, you will realize that this is what we are creating. So now there is select operation. If I select new user, you see, even though I don't click on submit, the previous form will get closed 
and a new form will open that is new user registration. After that, when I enter name, I enter email and I click on submit. The process gets completed. So the new user registration, now there are no other steps that I'm doing after user submits the data. Now, if I run again, right now, this process is completed, right? Now, if I select existing user, uh, another form opens that says customer ID submit so that when you submit the customer ID, you can search for the data in your Excel file or in your database, anything that you want to do. One, two, three, submit the form stops. So this is what we are going to create. Now we are, so basically what we have done is we have created triggers that when a new user option is selected, I'll trigger it in such a way that I'll show the form of new user registration. If existing user is selected, I'll show of existing user. So now this registration form is created as simple as that. I'll first create two more forms. That is new user registration. It has only two things. Name, you can use the text field. From advanced, you can use the email. Existing user, I'm just using a text field and you have to click on submit. So that, that is done. Like three different forms created. One is registration. Second is new user registration. And third is existing user. Now, how to display this form? Because now this is a workflow. It is not any activity. So to display any form that you have created, you have to use an activity called as show form in your main file. That, that should be your initial kickstart point of your form of your attended automation to get executed. So now I'm using here a show form activity in that when you click on drop down, multiple things will be visible because they are all the forms that you have created in your automation. So you don't have to enter the name in the drop down. The value will be directly there. Now in the previous form, we used to get output either in JSON or we can take from form field arguments that were there. So you can take the output in form field arguments like in or out arguments here. What you can do is. Here you get the outputs in dictionary. So what operation you have selected that if you see is a key over here. Here it is basically dictionary key value, right? So that is how you will get the output. And now this show form is done. So show form, you select the form that you want to display and then you just get the output, right? So if you see over here, I'm also using bring form to background. Many times what happens is a form gets executed and but it is not visible. So it is somewhere behind your Chrome or some other application, right? It is not visible to the user. So this is a very amazing activity that I would say that you have bring form to foreground. So I'm here selecting the from registration. It will bring to foreground. Now, just for now, remember that you have to use an activity called as run local triggers, right? I'll show how we are going to create the triggers. But for now, just understand that you have to use a run local triggers activity if you have created triggers in your initial form. How, what, everything we will deep dive into that. So for now, assuming we are using the run local triggers activity. Now, registration over to this drop down. Now you can create triggers based on every field that is there in the form. So if it is a drop down based on value selection, you want to create a trigger, any trigger that you want to create, you are selecting age, you are selecting values in radio buttons, in check boxes, every field can now have a trigger. So if I click on this, I can create a trigger. So I've already created one trigger that is select operation trigger. Now how to use it, we'll deep dive into that. So run local triggers is basically, it will continuously listen to all the local triggers on the user's machine. So anything that you select in the form triggers, this run local trigger will pass on the trigger to where you are listening to it. So here I'm running it. Now I'm listening to these triggers in a workflow called as operation. So I've created a trigger based workflow. You can say that is operation. So when you create a trigger over here, this workflow will be automatically created. So this is a trigger based workflow. Now, if you see over here, our main is a normal workflow. This you can see is a trigger based 
work here. Okay. So here I'm going to use local trigger activity. Here I have to define two things. First, which forms trigger I want to listen. So I've selected registration form. You can select any other form you want. Which event you want to listen. Form closed, form focus lost, gained, state change, minimized, restored, select operation changed, anything. So mine is going to be select operation change because once that value is changing, I want to trigger this. After that, I'm getting the form values. Like what is the value that I'm actually passing? So I'm getting the form values. And if you see here, there is a variable created called as selected operation. So get form values, you will get the values from the form, whatever is selected. So I'm just logging selected operation. So if you see, we had selected existing user. After that, I have created a switch case because based on the operation selected, I want to show two different forms. So in switch case, again, I'm using show form activity. But before that, what I'm doing is after getting the form values, I'm closing my registration form. So till now we have used four different activities. Show form, run local triggers, then local triggers activity, form trigger activity, get form values. And the fifth one that you have used is close form. So these are five different activities that we have already explored. One more that I missed, bring form to foreground is another activity that we have used. So here we are working on attended automation using form activities. And we are working on trigger based automation using trigger activities. I close the registration form and then I have switch case. In new user, obviously I have show form activity for new user registration and I can again get the output of whatever values I want to. An existing user is going to be existing user automation. After that, whatever operation I perform, new user and existing user after I click on submit in either of the form that is running, I want to stop all the local triggers and stop the execution. Otherwise, it will continuously be in the running stage, which we don't want to because it will obviously consume a license. So once the operation is completed, we want to stop the local triggers that are being executed. So this stop local triggers is connected to this run local triggers. So initially we started the run local triggers and now we are ending the local triggers. So this is how we have created a form, a trigger based form. You can say we also created the form using the new method that is there in 2023 package or 2023 release. You can say, so what we did is we created a form based on operation selection. We were listening to the local triggers continuously. Now what you can do is after this thing is submitted, right? And you don't want to stop the local triggers here. You can again show the registration form, right? If you do that, you will again be able to select the operation and you will be able to perform whatever operations you want to perform. So this was the basics of what latest UI path forms are. How can you create trigger based form? How can you create trigger based workflows? How to use trigger activities? Pretty much we tried to cover everything in detail. In further videos, we'll try to implement more use cases, involve more complex triggers and more complex connections so that we understand how these things are being executed. There is run form script activity. There are JavaScript operations also that we can perform. So we will deep dive into all of that as well. So thank you for watching the complete video. I hope you understood what this latest UI path form release is, how you can work on that and how you can create a complete trigger based attended automation. Thank you for watching the complete video. And if you have any specific use case that you want me to implement or want me to demo on, please feel free to comment on this video and I'll try to make a video on that. Thank you so much for watching the complete video. See you in the next video.